those who don't discern suffering. It sounds strange. We all know that there's suffering in life. The problem is that we don't really look at it. We try to run away, try to cover it up. Anything not to have to deal with it. And as a result, it keeps hounding us. No matter where we go, there it is, right at our heels. And so there comes a point where we have to turn around and just fully face it. This is suffering right here. Where is it right now? If you try to look at it straight on without any tools or any skills, it, it seems overwhelming. This is why we have the path. Uh, the practice, you work on the precepts so that when you come to the issue, you don't carry around a lot of guilt, a lot of denial. Because these two things really get in the way. If there's guilt, there's sometimes the feeling, well, maybe I deserve to suffer. If there's denial, then there's a feeling, okay, this suffering is unjust. It shouldn't be happening. Or you just cover it up, pretend that it's not happening. Either way, you don't really get to the root of the problem. You don't really understand it. And if you do this without any concentration, it's hard to maintain your focus at the same time. It's hard to maintain a sense of not being threatened by the suffering. This is why we work at developing our powers of concentration. Because the concentration involves not only a focus, but also a sense of well-being with your focus. You stay with the breath, get to know the breath, become friends with the breath. This is important many times when we're working at a meditation object and things don't seem to be going well after a while, the object becomes our enemy. If that's your attitude, you'll never be able to settle down with it. But realize, look at the breath as your friend. It's what's keeping you alive. And if you get to know it, you find it's <clears throat> it has all sorts of other good qualities beyond just mere survival. You can create a sense of ease, sense of well-being here in the present moment. You breathe in and the you feel full throughout the whole body. You breathe out, it feels relaxed throughout the whole body. There's a sense of energy and well-being that comes when you learn to get to know the breath and learn how to deal with it properly. And then when that sense of well-being and ease and energy is solid, okay, then you can turn your attention to look to the issue of suffering. Learn how to discern suffering. Where is it? How is it happening? The Buddha says basically it comes down to what they call the five clinging aggregates. There's form affected by clinging, there's feeling affected by clinging, perceptions, thought fabrications, consciousness, all of which are affected by clinging. And it's the clinging that makes them suffer. It's the clinging that tries to wring a happiness out of them that they just simply don't have to offer. And the fact of having to run around clinging to things puts the mind in a miserable position, too. Because the other word for clinging is the, the act of taking sustenance for something. It's like you're feeding on these things. And the mind that has to feed here has to feed there. It's a hungry mind. It's a mind whose food source always has to be protected. Can't go anywhere without that food source. So it's limited. It's limited by its own clinging, its own need to cling. So you develop strength in the mind so that it gets to the point where it doesn't have to feed, doesn't have to hold on to things. That's the strength of conviction in your own ability to do the practice conviction in the powers of your own actions. Persistence, mindfulness, concentration, and discernment. Discernment is the one that keeps all these strengths strong. As you begin to take apart exactly where is the clinging, why is there clinging? The Buddha says there are four kinds of clinging. You cling through sensual passion, you cling through your views, you cling through the set ways you have of doing things, and you cling ultimately to your sense of what you are, your sense of identification, saying, this is me, this is mine. The reason we cling is because we, we lack strength. 
So we develop these strengths of mind so we can really see through the fact that once the mind really understands itself, understands the situation, it doesn't have to hold on anymore. Once its powers of concentration are strong enough, once it's discernment into exactly how clinging happens and how it can be pried apart, taken apart, there's no more need to cling. You can let go. You feed the mind well to the point where it doesn't need to feed anymore. When the Buddha talks about the Four Noble Truths, he says our duty with regard to suffering is to learn how to comprehend it. And comprehending means getting to the point where ultimately you can let go. When you see that the suffering isn't really necessary at all, and that the mind itself is what's creating the causes, then you just stop, naturally. As long as you feel somehow that, okay, you've got to hold on to this, you've got to do that, you've got to think this way. As long as the mind is constricted like this, then it's not going to let go. No matter how much you tell it, no matter how much you explain, and how many Dharma books you read, Dharma talks you listen to, it's still going to hold on because it feels someplace deep down inside that it has to. It's afraid to let go. But when you finally train the mind to develop this discernment work and see through the situation, and realize okay, the clinging is not necessary. And it's, cre and it's suffering. When it's not necessary in suffering, why do it? That's when you can let go. And in fact, you don't have to tell the mind to let go. It automatically stops. So we're working on the path to the end of suffering. People sometimes complain the Buddha focuses an awful lot on suffering. Well, that's because he has a cure. If you had a cure for suffering, wouldn't you want to talk about it too? It's the people who are afraid to talk about suffering. Those are the ones who don't have the cure. They always try to cover things up, pretend that it's really not that bad a situation, or this is the ordinary life that everybody lives is as good as it gets, so you might as well enjoy it, make the best of it. That's desperation. The Buddha wasn't desperate. He was coming from a position of total freedom. He said, look, if you really sit down and with the proper tools and with the proper approach, learn how to discern suffering, get to the point where you really comprehend it and let go. You've solved all your problems in life. So who's pessimistic and who's optimistic? Or you might say the Buddha's are realistic, but realistic in a way that he sees through the problems. the mind creates for itself. Once the mind isn't creating any more problems for itself, then you're free to go wherever you like. At that point, the Buddha said he had nothing more to teach. This is the basic issue, suffering and the end of suffering. Once you comprehend both sides of the Buddha's teachings, what suffering is and also how it can be brought to an end, and you directly experience the end of suffering, okay, that's it. you finished the Buddha's teachings. As they say, the holy life is completed, the task is done. There's nothing left for you to do. At that point, you can live out the rest of your life in total freedom. So even when, when the training seems onerous, when it seems long, still there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And it's not a dark tunnel, it's a bright tunnel. The Buddha never asked you to do anything dishonest, anything that you'd be ashamed to do, unlike the world outside. He offers you a skill that can carry you not only through normal life, but also times of aging, illness, and death, with a whole range of experience. So this is what it means to discern suffering, because it goes all the way through not just the suffering itself, but on through the, to the end of suffering. And of all the skills the world has to offer, this is this is the most worthwhile. And so what time we have in our, to our lives. We don't know how much it is, but what time we do have, we know we have right now, so let's devote ourselves to it right now. This is the best use of our time. <laughs>